Hello everybody, welcome back. Seven minute reviews. <laughs> this, this, this is Freya, I'm Jason, bringing you today's video. As always guys, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We're just a small family channel. We just love to talk about books. That's what we love to do. And we would appreciate any support you guys might want to give us. Otherwise, just check the links down below for links to today's book and any other applicable links we may be able to come up with. Um, thank you, by the way, to our patrons. So today, I want to talk about a series I've talked about in the past, author I've talked about in the past. Uh, I want to talk about Stuart Gross and his book, Dark Fate 13. It seems like a super long series, but in reality, if you took everything, all 13 of them, put them together, you might get a book. Uh, a big book, but you might get a book. They're all about 50 to 75 pages. They're, they're, it's almost like, I'm pretty sure it's like a web serial, so if I haven't actually looked into Stuart Gross, I've read a lot of his stuff, but this is, this very much seems like a, a serial. This and a couple of his other books seem like web serials that he, he puts up. They're super, super, super short, which is the only thing I don't like. If they weren't on, on, uh, Kindle Unlimited, I, as much as I love this series, I honestly would not read it because they're just so incredibly short. These are these are 15 minute reads for me. But I love the series. I absolutely do love the series. So let's talk about book 13. So as I've mentioned in some of the previous ones, I'm not going to go over the usual four four categories. I covered that long ago. Um, the, the series is really, really growing. It's really growing and it's really managing to progress past what it originally started out as, as has his other other uh, main one that I, I read, his other little serial. He's got a few of them now. Um, there's there's been a real growth to 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 the author's writing. Initially, when he first started out, his writing was was very typical um, men's wish fulfillment, almost, uh, and also bordering on on taboo and and you know really less than common type of, of themes and subject matter and it permeated all of his books you know very a lot of very non-consensual stuff and and uh, um, you know very very I won't say dark because the writing is just not that dark it's actually more amusing than anything else his writing style is really fun uh, but definitely darker type of, of subjects at least but since then he's actually really progressing as an author and his books are getting even these short little ones are getting a lot better and starting to have a lot more plot and character driven to them and less of the, okay, here we go again, let's, let's, get, let's get naked and throw another slave brand or whatever it may be. Really progressing past that, and which is making them actually get more interesting. So this time around, now we have Zane Green, who is the reborn. It's like a lot of the, you know, a lot of the reborn books that we've read, reborn uh, lit RPG type books, that uh, you know was the reborn. But what we learned through some of the previous books too is there were what they call time strikes. Him going back in time was actually not the only time it happened. It happened multiple, multiple, multiple times, trying to fix this timeline and save Earth. As dark of a character as he may be. He's really trying to save Earth, and of course, you know, he wanted revenge from being betrayed, but even that has really kind of fallen away. While those, those, those betrayers are still kind of out there, and one of them is growing their own level of power, they, they're not brought up as much. You can see where they're going to play a major part. Like I said, this is really, really turning into a really good plot-driven book. And uh, um, so, they're, you know, they're still there, but Green has really progressed beyond that. And so, so has the, the writing now. He has established his Kingdom of Ceres, which is out on the Asteroid Ceres, and protected Earth twice now. It's starting to build more relationships, get more more recognition, and get Earth a little bit more recognition. And we're going now we're going out into the broader galactic scale, even though Earth is still newly integrated into the system, so they should be very, very weak, which is why they're being targeted so much. But instead, thanks to his foreknowledge and a few other other little gifts that were given to him. Uh, Zane has managed to build up a fairly powerful army, at least powerful enough to defend. And now he's starting to go out there. So the last book dealt with with uh, meeting representatives of the Commonwealth and actually saving them as they were pursuing an alien race, a very parasitic alien race. So now that that we have finished repairing their com the Commonwealth Commonwealth's uh, ship. Now, they're going back to, to where they originally came from, which had that invasion, only now Green is going with them, 
as support and to open up by a broader diplomatic ties. So along with that, it's actually bringing a diplomatic ship. Now that diplomatic ship has diplomats from various nations on Earth. Seeing as how Earth is a divided government, they are not eligible for membership into the Commonwealth per se, but they can still start opening up some diplomatic ties. And the Kingdom of Ceres is, of course, interesting enough to the Commonwealth that they definitely want them as an ally, even if they cannot be a member of the Commonwealth. And we're not entirely certain that Zane even wants to be a member of the Commonwealth, but he does realize he, he wants them as allies and needs them as allies. And that's what the primary thrust, so to speak, of, of this book is, is going out to this other system. We start learning more about the Commonwealth. We start learning more about the other races that are out there in the galaxy that are not necessarily pirates or, or monsters or anything that's trying to harm Earth or dungeons or anything, but actual civilizations. Civilizations, empires, groups of allies, confederations, Commonwealths, whatever you may want to call them. We're starting to learn more about them more about them, more about what they do, and more about how things within the system would work. You would think with the system, you know, you can kind of magic things, and yet we still need entire worlds developed to industry. And why? Why would we need that if we've got this system that can just kind of magic things things together? And it's explained a little bit more in the book, so we learn more about the system as well. Really, really fascinating. This series is getting better and better and better and better and better every single book. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will catch you guys next time. Bye now.